Even on a dreary winter day, Arena Stage's spanking new Mead Center for American Theater in Southwest D.C. pops. It's like the most kick-ass ski lodge you could imagine. It's light and airy and chill. Brand new, and yet, of course, Arena is celebrating 60 years. Artistic Director Molly Smith had a lot to say about the vibe of the place. The building is, is made to be transparent. We don't want art making to happen behind the doors. You'll actually see um, our shops pushing pieces of scenery up basically all the windows past Main Avenue. Molly's uh, office you can look into right off of the sidewalk. There's a reason why everything in this building is transparent and we want to make sure it's accessible for anybody that's interested. The reason I respect communications director Chad Bauman so much, he's not a flack for a company. This man's heart and soul are soaked in theater culture and arts and history. And so who better to take you on your own tour of the center? All right, inside this glass building are three separate theaters, and we're going to take you on stage and backstage. So this is our flagship space. Uh, it was built in 1960. It's named after our founder, Zelda Fitzchandler. Um, basically, the reason why we're known as Arena Stage is that this is arena-style seating. So it's seating from all four sides. What uh, that gets us is an incredibly intimate experience. So in this space, you see almost 700 seats, but no one patron is farther than eight rows from the stage. So now we're on the stage of the Fit Chandler, and when you're on the stage, you can see that there are uh, four what we call VOMs. These are the entrances that actors take. Um, and it comes from uh, the Greek word vomitorium, which actually literally stands for to vomit the actor forth. Um, so all of our Hold actors... On, you're not joking about no, this, No, I'm Jeff? serious. Right. Um, so we have uh, entrances in all four corners. We're going backstage. So this is where the actors would do all of their runarounds. So this is VOM 3. You can see there's a prop table. So all the props that come on and off, they go back to this prop table. So if I have to, if I have to, I, I just exited the stage from this thing, mm -hmm. and now I have to go to this one. So all right, Jack, walk around because we only got a little bit for between us, right? <laughs> all right, so we have to go back here and get around this prop, and then oh my God, when is this thing ever going to show up? Where is this vomitorium you were talking? About? And now here's the next one. Ah, okay, and boom, like that, we're ready to make an entrance. This is a quick change area. So if somebody has to do a quick, a quick costume change, that's where they would do it. But this is our dye shop. What's a dye shop? So if there's fabrics that need to be dyed, specifically a different color, there's a lot of them actually, or hats that need to be dyed. So now we're in um, the balcony of the Krieger so Theater. It's about 300, the balcony seats about 200. But even in this space, it's a very intimate feel. Um, so you're filming actually from the very last row. Oh, so wow. you can see how close that you actually feel. So, to it. Uh, this is the main lobby. The main lobby was created to hold up to 1,300 patrons at any given time because this is where all three theaters feed out of. Um, so you, in the front of us, you see the Fit Chandler. And then right here is the Kogod Cradle. And then right behind you is the Krieger that we came out of. There's one large bar. I think the cool part about this bar is that it's created to um, actually uh, serve patrons in all different types of heights. So I'm a relatively shorter guy, but as I walk, you can actually see this is to my rib cage. But as I walk, you can see it'll go well to my shoulder. So depending on how tall you are, you might want to figure out where you want to get your drink from. Uh, this, is, this carpet that was placed here is, uh, is custom uh, designed. It was actually designed by Bing Tom's wife. Bing Tom is our architect. Uh, we have um, elements of uh, light, fire, wind, water, that sort of thing. This is a sunburst, and so this is supposed to echo uh, the, the fire of the sun. We really like it because the, uh, it brings an element of uh, color and texture, pieces of art throughout the throughout the building, and it's theatrical art. So this is um, some stuff that came out of our artistic, our costume department. This is specifically from Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, and that uh, is also from Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. And everything is enclosed, you can see, by this 35,000 square foot uh, glass uh, structure, which is upheld by 18 of these parallel wood columns. These parallel wood columns are interesting because they're made out of 95% wood chips, 
and about 5% adhesive. Um, and it holds the entire uh, weight of the structure up. So each one on average holds about 400,000 pounds of, of load. And they all go down, you can actually see on that one, they all go down to a little point. Uh, so if you really think about it, the entire weight of this building is all resting on 18 little tiny points. And those points were designed to look like the point of a ballet shoe. And let's go take a peek into the Kogod. Are the lights on? It's circular and it's designed so that our audiences uh, can take a moment to leave behind their worldly concerns and uh, prepare themselves to enter a highly theatrical space. As it continues, if you look to my left, you'll start to see peaks of the imagery that's happening on the stage. And that's so it gives hints of, to our audience members so you can start seeing through. Let's peek through. Aha. So it starts to give hints of what it is that you're about to see. And the anticipation builds. That's right. We have to be a little theatrical, you know. <laughs> and then basically you end this spiral entrance at the top of uh, the new Kogat Cradle. And this is the view you see. And not only is it aesthetically pleasing, I mean, it's a gorgeous space, but it has a very practical function. And that is to make the acoustics in this room uh, perfect. Now, admittedly, the Mead Center for the American Theater sounds a little highfalutin, but in part two, you'll see why the name is so apt. Kyle Osborne for EntertainmentOrDie.com.